just been a social experience. Viewed with family and friends, or discussed around the office and the playground the next day. Then, along came social media, smartphones and tablets, resulting in an explosion of second screen interaction. Now, TV audiences can share their viewing experience in real time. This is the social TV phenomenon. So what does this mean for broadcasters and advertisers? Conventional wisdom assumes that the distraction of the second screen is detrimental to the first screen. But is this right? MEC and The Seven Network, two curious companies, joined forces to discover exactly how the second screen impacts the first. We couldn't rely on traditional methods. In fact, it's impossible for a respondent to articulate their level of engagement through focus groups or diaries. Eye tracking can tell us which screen they're on, but not their level of engagement. The only way to empirically understand the effects of social TV on the first screen was through neuroscience. Partnering with NeuroInsight, we conducted a world-first study that measured neurological responses whilst viewers watched live TV and interacted naturally with social media. A panel of typical social TV viewers was recruited via Twitter and Fango. They watched four different episodes of Seven's hit reality show, The X Factor. A refitted research facility allowed us to monitor every second of the participants' viewing behaviour on both the first and second screens. 153 cases of social interaction allowed us to measure participant engagement levels between the two screens. So what did we find? Contrary to conventional wisdom, the results are great news for TV. Participants had an increase in engagement after a social interaction of 9%. This chart shows the aggregated behaviour of our viewers either side of a social TV interaction over a five-minute period. First up, notice the spike in engagement on the first screen. We call this the trigger. It slowly starts to descend to a point where the viewer shifts to the second screen. This switch to social media sees a huge engagement leap. These high engagement levels stay raised until second screen interaction is over. The return to the first screen is followed by a recalibration, where engagement drops below its previous first screen level. This is a common occurrence seen in neuroscience studies after such a leap in activity. After this recalibration, neurological engagement actually increases. On average, the viewer engagement is 9% higher than their previous first screen state. But this isn't just a one-off occurrence. In fact, the 9% increase in engagement not only lasts, it builds. Our viewers on average interacted four times with the second screen during a 30-minute program. Every time the second screen is engaged, the viewer returns to the first screen more engaged. Over the course of a 30-minute program, the average cumulative increase was 23%. So we know that social TV increases engagement. Important for advertisers, as increased engagement is linked to heightened ad effectiveness. What we also know is that it changes viewers' neurological state. This change in state is between global memory and detailed memory. For advertisers, global memory is typified by branding, imagery and jingles, whereas detailed memory is typified by product specifics, price points and URLs. The heightened engagement has been driven overwhelmingly by an increase in detailed memory. So social TV viewers are more primed to specifics and details. Like all social media, it's about social networks, not individuals. Social TV viewers are now real-time ratings recruiters. Social TV is reviving appointment-to-view programming and delivering audiences that are much more engaged. This is just the beginning of a re-socialization of TV.